Hey, all right, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. Be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is fine. Mike sent in this question. Sometimes you just look at this stuff and say, why do they want to do this? Uh, they have a whole range of cells here, and I'm going to hide a bunch of these rows so that way we can uh, see what's going on here. Okay, so 4 or 5, row 179, row 180 is where the total happens to be. Uh, and they want a formula here that's going to create the address of the cell with the total. All right, now maybe they want to use that in an indirect, I, I don't know. But anyway, if they insert more rows, they want to figure out where that total is. All right, so the first thing I did is I used one of the tricks from Excel Gurus Gone Wild, and that's to do either a VLOOKUP or a MATCH for a number that has to be uh, larger than any possible number. And instead of doing the comma false at the end, we're going to do comma true or, well, technically it should be a 1 if we're doing a MATCH. And what that does is it says, hey, I want to find the value that is just larger than 99999. But if there isn't one, it's going to give us the last numeric value in the column. And in this case, it'll tell us that that is in row 180. Uh, and then to finish that off, we'll just say ampers equal in quotes A ampersand match. Now, initially, I thought about trying uh, to look for the max. And actually, instead of looking for 9999, to look for the max of column A, something like this. knowing that that would, in theory, give us the total. But you always worry about some weird situation where they had a $1,000 sale and a $1 credit and the total is only $9.99. Uh, and so I go back to that original formula. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Wow, what I love about these duels, that is 180 degrees directionally away from the approach I'm going to take. Got to love it. A and then match. All right, um, I'm going to use the address function. Address will give you the address of a cell if you get a row number, a column number. So I'm going to say, hey, row, row of what? Now, the goal here is to insert and have um, the address of this total down here, right? So if I click on this cell, and you can see up here row A180. Then if I insert any, this will be pushed down, and that uh, reference will update. So I'm going to uh, close parenthesis and then comma, scroll all the way up. Same thing, I'm going to do column. If only I could spell column, and I'll do uh, A180. All right, so the first two arguments, row and column, you just tell it, and it will give us the address. Now, comma, the next part is absolute, uh, mixed, or relative. So I'm going to put a 4. And the final argument is. Uh, which style. So, um, And by default, it's A1. So we're going to leave that out. Backspace. Let me. So we've got a 4 there. And then, boom, that'll do it. A180. Um, another way you could do this is uh, maybe even a little bit uh, uh, easier, if you don't mind absolute. Hey, just use the cell function, address. In, uh, we're in 2010, so you get this drop down. There's all sorts of amazing things that the uh, cell function can do. Boom. Um, and then, comma, the reference, A180. Dollars. Right? And so then there's uh, dollar signs. Now let's go ahead and test this. Right click uh, the, col the row headers, right click insert. And sure enough, it updates. You know, uh, that's kind of annoying there. If you liked this approach, maybe we could do something like this. Right? You don't like those dollar signs, so how about substitute? Now, the text, that's the text for substitute, comma. The old text we don't like is in double quotes, dollar sign. And then that's the old text, comma. And the new text, hey, let's just do double quote, double quote for blank. Close parentheses. A All right, uh, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. Whoa, hey, Mike, that's really cool. You're counting on the fact that if they insert new rows, that total is going to move and because you refer to the cell, it's going to keep pointing at that cell. Here, I thought that maybe they would just enter a total randomly in some other cell or something like that. Um, so if you're going with that approach, which I love, uh, then why don't we do equal A and row of A180, which will give us A, yeah, A180. And if we would later insert some rows, 
those move down and it changes like that. Cool. I love these dueling podcasts. Well, yeah, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun.